Hi, welcome to Jackie Burns Creations. Today we are creating with plaid. I am an ambassador for plaid products and I love using their paint, their Mod Podge, anything they come out with. Well, us ladies who are all ambassadors get together and we do a collaboration once in a while. We did one in the summer and we're getting together to do another one. So here's all the lovely ladies that are in the collab, and I wish you'd go visit the playlist and their channels. So, project number one. I got these new terracotta paints from Plaid, and I thought, oh, I'd like to try them out. I was so intrigued when I saw them come out in the summer. So I had some different jars from Dollar Tree and I'm using three different colors. They're just really beautiful, subtle colors. And I'll give a listing in my description box of what they are. One was a very light beige and this one is a light blue. This paper I got from Jamie Ray Vintage. It's great paper. You can cut it apart and use different pieces of it. And that's just exactly what I did. I love the vintage look. Love it all the time, but I really love it at Christmas. So I'm just trimming it up. This is 18 pound paper and it's very easy to use. So I know this color looks kind of gray on uh, my camera, but uh, it's a very light blue, very subtle light blue. So of course I'm using the plaid Mod Podge because that's my favorite product of every one they use. So I'm putting these on, even though it's uh, bumpy on some of the bottles, I'm still putting it on there and I think it still looks great. This paper isn't near as tender as tissue paper or napkins. It's a little more workable. You don't have to be quite as gentle with it. Usually I use a saran wrap over uh, napkins, but I didn't have to on this. It just went on very easily. They use a different product at uh, Jamie Ray Vintage, but I think the Mod Podge worked just as well. So here's a distressed ink that I'm just going around the edge of the picture with. Giving it an old vintage look. You could always wet the edges and tear it. So this is a metallic luster and I'm using my paintbrush and just just swiping over the edge to make this pattern stand out a little bit more. It's a, it's a goldish color. I used a little bit of water on it. It's, it's a water-based wax, 
but see how that's giving just a nice little look, vintage look in the creases of the bottle, but it's giving it a little bit of sheen from the gold. You can see me working on each one of them. And I put a little rope around the top. This is a nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And some nice twine. Now these picks I got at uh, Walmart. I very rarely use a pick the way it comes. I always tear them apart and use them how I want to use them. Now, uh, it was a little too short for the bottle and I didn't have any foam. So I thought, well, I need to put something in the bottom there to raise them up. So I had that uh, roll from the paper towels and I just kind of stuffed it in the bottom and raising up the branches. And these I got from the poinsettias I got from Dollar Tree. And that's still a debate. Nobody's told me how they say poinsettia. Is it poinsettia or poinsettia? I guess you can say it however you want. And I put some of the pine cones in there. And there the three are. I think they look just lovely, especially when they're tiered like that. I hope you like them and it encourages you to make something similar. You can always find things like uh, the vintage look on the graphics fairy DIY number two so I had this wood round that I got from Dollar Tree I just couldn't believe I found these there this is about a 12 inch wood round 12 or 10 I can't remember I think a 12. So I painted part of it the red and I put tape down. But I get so enthusiastic sometimes to get started, I forget to turn the camera on. Sometimes I've just sat down and made a whole project and thought, oops, I didn't film that. So this green frog tape works really nicely for blocking off paint. And I'm painting the bottom a white. And here's another one of these papers. And I thought this was so cute. Santa sleeping and the dog's asleep. It's after a busy week. And especially one busy day. So I got this bow at Dollar Tree and I cut off the tails because I didn't want the tails blocking the picture, but I wanted a nice red bow up there. And I'm taking some of these picks again and cutting them apart. And instead of tucking them underneath, I'm tucking them in that center part of the bow. Just putting a little glue underneath of that. Oh, I've got some evergreens and some berries. I think these berries might have come from Hobby Lobby. And I'm adding a nice string, put uh, knots on the end. 
And then I always like to put tape over it. I saw Holly over at Hot Humble Pie do this, and I thought, oh yes, I've had strings give way before. And there it is with the bottles. I think it looks sweet. You're going to have to tell me what you think. Okay, now we're for the final project, DIY number three. I wanted uh, some of these little triangle pieces that you get at Dollar Tree, but I couldn't find any. Of course, everybody's wanting them this time of year because they look kind of like a tree. And uh, I used the one that uh, I had for Halloween. So what I did was I took the decal off of it and Mod Podge this really pretty paper on it. Got this paper at Hobby Lobby in a pack that's a vintage looking pack. So that's my little finger sander from Amazon. Love that little thing. It's so handy and you just saw me how easy it is to change the sandpaper. You can get sandpaper in a heavier grip or a light grip. And I didn't show myself painting. I used a Mod Podge paint. I'm really, it's a chalk paint, it's a green. And I've been really in the mood of green. There's some really gorgeous greens out. It's not a forest green or really a Christmas green. It's just more a subtle moss type green. In fact, I think that was the name of it, moss. So out of the pack, they had this one that was striped and I cut out a couple of striped side edges for the sides. And I don't know why I chose to put it on with my glue gun, but I did. And here we go to the other side. I think I was just in a mood to get it done and uh, not wait for it to dry. So here's another terracotta paint. And uh, this looks like some of them that were at Dollar Tree, but I never did find those. These I ordered from N Beads. And they're really cool, but they're very, gen you have to be very gentle with them. You sure don't want them around kids. So there's the ceram coat, and I'm just putting a little plop on my palette there. A little bit of water. Water it down and paint the antlers. And if you notice, there is a hole, or where there's a part of his leg missing in the back. And when I opened the package, I didn't see it fall out anywhere. So these are like a balsa wood, but very, you have to be very, like I say, very gentle with them. And so I'm using various plaid paints to paint this. You could paint it all one color. You could paint it in black, paint it in white. I chose to give it a little bit of detail. You can see I like to layer the paints in different colors. And here's the moss chalk paint. 
And I like mixing the acrylics and chalk. Of course, that's, that's what the chalk is. It's an acrylic mixed with a thickener. And many people make their own chalk paints by using the acrylic and adding baking soda with it. I opened this up and it was black and I thought, wait a minute, what's it doing black? Well, the water had risen to the top of it. So I had to give it a good shake. didn't want it real thick on there, so I was using water that was on my palette because uh, I wanted it to be a little translucent. And there's a lighter green. I'm just highlighting. Enjoy the music while you watch me paint. <laughs> I was trying to figure out which feet went in the hole because there was only one hole out front, so I didn't know which foot went in there. Didn't seem like any tabs were that much longer. And I didn't want to force it too much and break another leg. Okay, so I figured it out. Put a little glue on there. And I just set it on the edge of there. Okay, and when something's broken or not quite right, I always have a way of fixing it or disguising it. So I figured the greens would look good anyway. And then I work on putting some greens in there. And with the greens, we're going to hide the broken back leg. Because, you know, stuff happens. Just a little dab of glue to hold it right in front of there.
I hope you can't hear that helicopter going over my house right now. Okay, there it is all done. Just picking up those darn glue strings. Good. And here it is finished. I think it came out just really cute. Okay, I really thank you for visiting and please subscribe and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.